Hi guys, welcome back to the One Alter channel. My name's Rob. Today I've got in this 2011 Honda CRV ID Tech. It's in today for rear brake pads. This one I serviced about three or four months ago and I advised the customer then they were getting low, so it's in, it's in for today. So let's take you through the process. Okay, first thing I'll do, get the bonnet open, um, get your reservoir for the brake fluid, and I always take that off just so that when you push back the pistons, the fluid can go into there nicely. Sometimes these are topped up on service um, and, and there's just too much fluid in there. Take the lid off, if it overflows it's not going to do any damage. I always fear that if, um, if you're going to push a piston back and it can't escape, you could do some damage into the, um, the brake master cylinder seals there. So I always, front or rear pads, always take the lid off. Just remember to put it back afterwards. Next thing to do once you've located your locking wheel nut adapter, Crack these wheel nuts off on the ground before you go up in the air with your uh, impact or whatever you've got. If you're doing this on the ground, you'll be doing this first in the rain. Never use an impact on these uh, locking wheel nut adapters because they're very weak. Loosen the wheel nuts off both sides, we'll go up in the air and get these wheels off. Okay, let's show you these brake pads. Get some light in there. Uh, so as you can see there's not a great deal of material left there. Get my torch stuck up here, get some light on the situation. That's it. I've just about made that out. There's your disc your rotor there and as you can see either side should be your brake pad, there's not a lot of material so we'll get these changed out. Um, bolt one to here, one there. Let's go and get some tools. All right. 13 mil, these bolts. One there, these bolt into a slider. Always make sure that your slider is free, like that one is, moving backwards and forwards. These have a tendency, they can seize up sometimes and prematurely wear your brakes, make the brake bind. Top bolt and done. That off like so. Okay, these handbrake setup on these CRVs have an internal handbrake shoe, so this is just a straightforward uh, caliper so we can get some grips. We'll just push that piston back as you would on the front brakes. That's going back lovely and easy. So everything's free here, no problems at all. Um, most rear calipers, however, you need special tools and you have to wind this piston back in. Um, I'll do a video on one of those next time I get a, get a pair, to, get a set in to do. And there we go, that's, that's back, that's lovely. It's resting on the arm, I don't have to use a safety harness here to hold the, take the weight. Let's get the old pads out. One. Yeah, that one will come out nice and easy. So, there's a worn brake pad. Not completely worn, but if you look at the thickness of this and compare it to the thickness, get it the right way around, of the new one. You can see there's a lot more material on this one. So, yeah, definitely a good call there. Right, let's get them fitted. Well, what we need to do is clean off some of the brake dust from inside this caliper carrier where the pads sit. So, inside here and here, and there and there on the inside. You can use good old emery cloth, sandpaper. You can 
get in there and basically get it back to get it shiny. Some brake pads come with new hardware where you can just pop these off and replace these. Uh, the set pads I have, I've got today haven't got the hardware with it so I'll just clean them up. You can use also, I've just got this square flat file, just gently go in there, it does exactly the same thing as the emery cloth, but I find you can get deeper into places with this file than you can with emery cloth. So that's why I like to use it, so we'll just go to the top and the bottom. That on the outside. Inside. Use the emery cloth there on the inside. See, so just get most of the crap off there. Get a little shine on it so you know it's nice and smooth and new pads are going to slide in there nicely. We're going to lubricate the ends of the pads where they sit in here anyway. So all will be good. So, got some high temperature brake grease that comes with the brake pads. So we'll put some in there like so. And up above. And on the inside, try not to get it on the brake disc. If you do, it doesn't matter, just wipe it off. If you've made a right mess, get some brake cleaner and wipe it off. So that's where the pads sit. So the brake pads are on here, on the inside pad, inner pad, has this piece of metal on it here. This is a wear indicator. So basically when this, when this material wears all the way down, it reaches that metal, that metal piece at the end there. That metal piece then rubs on the brake disc and makes a squealing sound. Uh, these are always fitted on the inside so we'll just get some of this grease on the ends where it sits in the caliper this is the inside one I like to put a bit around there where the piston touches the pad as well make it simple enough put it in like so Do the same with the other one. More grease. Um, if you haven't got any, if you haven't got any of this uh, grease with a brake pad, you can use some anti seize, some copper slip, something like that. Is normally okay. And then where these uh, legs of the caliper sit, just like that. So, Pop it in, in at the bottom first, into the spring, and then that's it. That's those fitted. So next, the caliper itself, get some of the grease onto the leg, one there, one there, smidge on the piston. Not only does it lubricate everything, it um, it can uh, prevent uh, squealing sometimes, so, which is always a good thing. No one likes squeaky brakes. So make sure, oh yeah, that's, that's free. If these are not free, just pull back the rubber here and you can withdraw this. I suppose at this time it's a good idea to put some grease on it. It's already had some before, you can see the, the white grease on there. So We'll just give it a bit more, pop that back in. Click it into the rubber and do the same with the bottom one. So we're not going to get any seizure issues. There you go. Like so. Power for them back on. Turn these round. They only fit one way because of the because of the cutout. That is it. Get the bolts. One there. Get that one started. Yep, one there. Just 
just nip that one up. And nip that one up. Tighten them up. In fact, over tighten them, it's only a small thin thread. Just like that, don't kill it, you'll be fine. There we go, that's that side done. road wheels up uh, 100, 108 newton meters. Forgot to tell you it's a 19 mil socket. once you've lowered it down the next thing to do of course you've got to pump the brake pedal out so just there if you can see on the, the brake fluid has considerably risen up the reservoir this is what I was saying if it's over full and the caps on you've got nowhere to nowhere to go so it's risen up what we'll do now in fact I'll try and set it up so you watch it as I pump the brake pedal that fluid will drop okay right, pump the brake pedal now just gently, goes all the way to the floor and then it gradually pumps up until you've got the hard pedal. And that's it. Of course all you've got to do then is put the cap back on. That level's dropped to the proper max level just there, so I'm quite happy with that. There we go. Hello guys, so that's how you do your rear pads on your Honda CRV. I uh, hope the video is of use to somebody. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the logo just there. And uh, you can keep up to date then with all our uploads. Don't forget you can connect to me on Facebook, on Twitter and on Google+. Thanks for watching.